I bought some of the craziest PlayStations ever made, spending thousands of dollars on some of the rarest consoles in the world. And in this video, we are going to unbox all of them. Let's first start with this tiny box right here. And this is a one of a kind console that I found on eBay. Now, of course, throughout this video, we are going to take a look at a huge range of PlayStations. In the past, I did a video called I Bought the Coolest PlayStations Ever Made. And in there, we featured all of the PlayStation 4 limited editions that you could purchase. But I've done further research and found some PS1s, PS2s, and also some PS5s. And what I've got right here should be a custom PS1 that, <laughs> why is it wrapped in toilet paper like kitchen roll? That's so uh, bizarre packaging. Wow, that looks okay. <laughs> it's not too bad. Oh, wow, that's so nice. I love the mechanical buttons on the old P uh, PS1. Like, look at that, watch me click this button and how it just stylishly opens up. So right here, obviously we've got a PS1 that looks completely different than what you're used to. The PS1's obviously gray. The PlayStation 1 that I have, is it, it looks like it's been in some smoker's house. It's all stained, like nicotine stains on it. It's, it's pretty ancient. So this is a, a nice clean one that I can probably hopefully replace it with. It looks in much better condition. But what's different about this one is obviously the top panel has been customized and also the color. It's, it's a custom color. So on the top panel right here, it's got a complete transparent uh, Perspex top. So it's got this really cool uh, glass. It's been quite a neat job to be fair. They've cut that not too bad and then they've glued it on. They've even added a PlayStation logo so you can actually see the PlayStation 1 disc spinning inside of here when it is active which is quite a nice touch. But also in addition to this the console has had a custom paint job which just looks like it's been spray tan. Nothing too crazy just a ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, and it looks good. It looks good. A few marks here or there but I think it is a, a nice revamp. It looks a lot more modern than like the gray. The gray just didn't age very well. Unless you have a PS1 that's pristine, the gray just looks awful, like all faded, sun damaged, and so on. So this is a nice way of keeping it updated. It's still got the, the original sticker on there to show it's a real console. And they've even gone to the effort of sticking a nice PS logo on the back. Not a bad design overall, and it wasn't too expensive. I think this cost me around 65 pounds, so about 70, 75 dollars, which I think is kind of worth it. A little bit of a problem though, it doesn't come with any controllers. Inside the box, there's no controllers at all. So you will need to go out and buy some game pads. Now going to the other end of the spectrum, we've looked at the oldest PlayStation. Now let's take a look at one of the newest PlayStation. So this is the brand new PlayStation 5 Spider-Man 2 limited edition console. And it's one of the first and only limited edition PlayStation 5s that you can currently buy. Up until this point, there's only been console covers to switch out uh, the standard white that it comes in. However, this is a complete product bundle. Included is a limited edition controller, obviously a limited edition console, and a copy of a game. Now, in my last video where I bought the coolest PlayStations, we included the PS4 Pro Spider-Man Edition, which I personally thought was pretty nice. Very sim uh, simple design, just a red console with a Spider-Man logo on there, but there was something about it that was quite novel. It looked a little bit like a Spider-Man suit. Now, this console has a little bit more complexity to its design on one side. I love the fact that the Venom is sort of taking over the Spider-Man, which looks great on this side. However, when you flip it over, this is a little bit basic. It's just a black console with literally like almost like a sticker here of the Spider-Man logo. So I feel like that lets it down a little bit. Very strong start, then it just doesn't quite finish the race. Something else that I think would have been pretty nice with the Spider-Man console would have been to have included additional storage. Obviously all of the PlayStations come with like around one terabyte of storage, like 600 and something gigabytes that's actually usable. Would have been nice to have had this console come with a two terabyte drive. This would have helped differentiate it as well between um, like a non-limited edition console because you can just buy these console covers independently, just individually and throw them onto your standard console. So like it means if you sell this years down the line, lose the box, you can't really prove it was a limited edition Spider-Man 2 console, which might mess up the used market a little bit. If we then take a look at the details on the controller, I absolutely love the design here. This controller absolutely destroys the PS4 controller that came with the original Spider-Man PS4 Pro. It looks amazing. You've got um, these nice white buttons, so it's got that sort of vibe still with the, with the nice contrast on the red. Then you've got obviously Venom, again, sort of that Cyndion taking over uh, the Spider-Man. And then you then have all these blacked out buttons on the left-hand side, again, for the Venom theme on here. It's a real nice dual tone design. And I also love the fact that these thumbsticks are black, whereas on the, old, uh, the PS4 controller, they were white and the triggers were also white, which meant they got dirty really easily. 
Another pretty sweet accessory to pair with all of these Spider-Man themed PlayStation products is this $15 controller holder. I purchased this on Amazon. It looks absolutely amazing and just sort of completes the overall vibe. So let's take a look at another console, hopefully a PS4 Pro, because we've been talking about those since then. No, it's not a PS4 Pro, it's the wrong box. Let me switch it out. This should be the PS4 Pro <laughs> that I think uh, is inside of these boxes. Ah, come on. This thing's well wrapped. <laughs> oh, these videos get so messy. We have so much cardboard around when we make these vids. It's like a bale. Come on. Who wrapped this? One eternity later. Right, we're almost there. Got it, right. You just think we just spent like £3,000 on this console, <laughs> the way they wrapped that. I've, they didn't wrap my rare 20th anniversary that well last year when I purchased it from these guys. Okay, so what we've got right here is the Death Stranding PS4 Pro. Looks pretty sick. I'm gonna, not gonna lie, I've never really been that excited about this game, Death Stranding, when it came out. A lot of hype around it. Is it overhyped? I don't know, I'll let you decide that in the comments below. Oh, it's got a torn box. Every single PlayStation has literally a torn box like this because these flaps are so sensitive. Damn it, okay. I'm hoping it's in good condition because it looks pretty sick, this one. So even though I don't like the game, well, I've never tried the game. It just never attracted me. I do love the console. This has always been a pretty, wow, look at that controller, guys. Oh, it looks class. Okay, where do we start? First, got this gorgeous transparent design. Look at that. You can see all of the, um, the force feedback, vibration motors rather, inside of the controller when it's in operation. Looks perfect. It's a perfect amount of transparency where it shows what you need to see rather than like looking messy. Sometimes when you get them crystal, like clear transparent cases, they can look a little bit messy. See all the wires and stuff. But this looks super tidy. Then got some little Easter eggs as well attached onto the controller. But to top things off, these buttons right here are color coded. Wow, looks amazing. So these are color coded to not match the color of the transparent yellow case, but actually the color on the back of the controller. All of these are some pretty nice details just to really finish it off. Same as well is true for these little arrows located by the D-pad. And then to complete the entire package on the touchpad of the DualShock 4 controller, there is a Death Stranding logo that actually looks pretty tidy and it's also very discreet. You can only really see it with the, the way the light catches it on certain angles. Really strong start with that controller and it's got me pretty hyped about checking out the console. Oh wow, it looks, it looks sweet, white. Okay, nice, let's have a look. Oh, it's in perfect condition. Well, I wouldn't say perfect, but good enough. That looks incredible. So we've got a white PS4 Pro that has got the paint hand mark prints on it, which is obviously an iconic reference to the game. But it isn't just like a basic white console from that point. There's also this gorgeous uh, strip of black down the middle to add further contrast to the overall design with the Death Stranding logo on that looks beautiful. I like this little strip down the middle. It just gives it a little bit more definition. You've got the white with the black and then just a little more black around here that really makes it feel limited in special edition rather than just a white console with some stuff slapped on with some stickers on the front. And it all ties in nicely with then the super bright yellow controller altogether. I must admit the PS4 Pro has aged pretty well. It can still game at 4K30 in a variety of different titles, although it, it does get pretty loud. But from my testing over the last 12 months in some previous videos, I was really impressed with how some games played and performed on the PS4 Pro still. It was a very manageable experience. It's also a great console if you wanna play some of those slightly older PS4 games, some single player games, for example, that have had that performance patch. So it's maybe 1080p solid 60. Uh, Metal Gear Solid was one of those games on the topic of obviously Konami, that if I recall correctly, had like a solid 60 FPS on a PS4 Pro. So the overall experience was just much better for playing those old past gen consoles. Now one beauty of the PS4 Pro is the fact that it's a fantastic option for like used pre-owned games. You can pick up some fantastic PlayStation 4 titles really cheap on disc, throw it into the PS4 Pro and just play them obviously a little bit better with that better performance. It makes it a great console to pair with something like an Xbox. So if you maybe like an Xbox Series S or Series X kind of guy, then you can have that there and then still get a decent performance from some PlayStation titles for some of the story games. Let's now take a look at what was in this big box that I accidentally got a moment ago. This is a console 
that I'm super excited about. I wanted this so badly when I was a teenager, when I was a kid, I was about like 14 years old. This is the Batman Arkham Knight PS4. Now, I was a huge fan of the Batman games, more specifically like Batman Origins. Uh, Arkham Knight was okay, but you know, I, it was a little bit button mashy, you know, all of them are like that, but I, there was something about it. When it came out, it had dreadful performance. There was loads of hate on this game because of how bad its performance was when it came out. It was seriously awful. Uh, it was really, really poor. But it's okay now, it's obviously been patched almost 10 years later, you'd hope it'd be okay. But the console, regardless of all of that, the console is pretty sick. This looks amazing, mate. Okay, so let's first start with the controller. Oh, it's sticky, what the hell? Ooh, okay, so the controller's not in the best condition. Someone has got some sticky stuff on there. Uh, oh, they've like torn the, the sticker off the back, so it's all like, you know, like the uh, warranty sticker and stuff. No idea why that was a good idea to do, but whatever. So it's a pretty basic controller. It's just literally silver controller. No Batman logos on it anywhere. Looks pretty tidy though. I like it. It's, it's quite similar actually to the one that came with the Metal Gear Solid PS4 controller. That was like a darker shade of gray. Did have some Easter eggs on, but similar vibes overall with the aesthetics. Oh, that thumbstick stick as well. God, I don't think I'll be using this controller. This is pretty nasty, <laughs> pretty disappointing. But hopefully things get a bit better with the actual console. Let's take a look at this beast. Oh, that looks good. It's in good nick as well. This could, this could have been tragic, just like the controller was. So this right here is a beautiful gunmetal gray, regular PS4, not a PS4 Pro, nothing like that. Just a good old 500 gigabyte PS4 Pro. But obviously it's got this beautiful uh, Batman sort of decal, you could say, but it's actually sort of etched into this like aluminium plate that's on it, uh, which is for the Batman Arkham Knight. That's what makes it look so good. Obviously this is like a plasticky console that looks like it's a gunmetal brushed gray. But then this here actually does feel um, a little bit more premium. It maybe is still plastic, but it feels metally. I think it is plastic, but it looks and feels uh, metal and looks awesome. There was something about the PS4, especially this fat PS4 that just worked for special edition consoles. That I feel like the PS4 was just a much more attractive console than the PS5. Like you see it with that Spider-Man edition PS5. It's just something about that limited edition console that just doesn't kind of work. Like one side looks good, other side just looks a bit like, eh, a bit average. So like something about it, it's like the shape of it. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's because it isn't symmetrical when you've got the, the old disc edition, like because you've got the disc drive, maybe it would have looked better on an all digital version. Don't know, but there's something about the PS4 and the PS4 Pro and even the PS4 Slims. All of those consoles look great. Then you slap the limited edition livery on it, looked even better, just because this nice sort of angular design. Everything is just matching. There's all the angles are right. Everything just works great. This Arkham Knight one's a pretty simple design, very similar to the Uncharted F4 console that I'm pretty sure they released. Just a basic color with a cool top panel. While we're talking about simple consoles and also the PS5 and, and the not so good limited editions that have came out so far, this right here is a custom painted PS5. I actually had this custom painted by a car shop. So they obviously spray paint cars. I had them spray paint my PS5 console covers as a prototype for something that I, I want to show you later on this year. So stay, uh, uh, stay, stay tuned for that. But this right here is a custom painted Suzuki blue. Like, so it's literally a car color onto some PS5 console covers. It looks absolutely insane. Look, look at how glossy it is. It's just super duper shiny super simple as well, and it just does the job. Now, I personally think this gives sort of Grand Theft Auto paint shop vibes. It's been spray painted in a car shop. You like almost like where you can customize your vehicle in, in GTA and change all the colors. Gives me vibes of that's like a GTA 6 edition. Let's pretend it's a GTA 6 edition PS5. Now, this is also a one of one in the world right now in this Suzuki blue color on a PlayStation 5 console, and I think it looks pretty sick and pretty crazy. Now, if you wanna see me test more custom paint jobs on PS5 console covers, comment down below what colors you would like to see. A particular color that I'm definitely going to try out next is a, a crazy orange, but I'd love to see what your thoughts are. And also, what would you rate this Suzuki Blue PS5 out of 10? Now, I'm gonna give it a solid eight out of 10. Now, I'm pretty proud of this one. Now, in particular, what I love about this spray painted console is the way that it catches the light. When you've got different lights on in your gaming room, it just, reflects the light in a much more unique way than these matte console covers that we've been getting from Sony so far, like that matte black, all that type of stuff just picks up loads of fingerprints. Whereas this looks pretty sick on a shelf or like as a centerpiece, actually being proud that you've got a PS5 like at the heart of your gaming setup and it's really eye-catching. 
another Sony console that's eye-catching are these OG PlayStation 2s. Now, I've managed to find, these are pretty rare. These are very hard to source. Oh, condition doesn't look the best. So it's just being kept in some guy's garden shed. Look at this uh, hideous box. Andy, some guy called Andy. Andy, console in box, Andy, or, or something. Okay, whatever. Well, thank you for sending this out, Andy. Uh, for us. But basically, back in the early 2000s, I think it was, they made these limited edition metallic consoles. And Sony's actually sort of honored the anniversary of this recently with some metallic PS5 console covers that are releasing uh, later this year. So you can get in blue, red, and also silver. Now, by chance, we actually have a silver PS2 here that those new PlayStation 5 console covers are actually based upon. Now, my most played game on the PS2 was The Simpsons Hit and Run. That was an OG classic that 1000% needs to be remastered for the new generation. I would buy that game, play it right through, and it would be amazing. It was, it was like the kid version of Grand Theft Auto. I wasn't allowed to play GTA. I was banned from that other than just driving around and I would, someone would have to watch me. I wasn't allowed to use any weapons. But Simpsons Hit and Run let me smash some stuff up, get that anger out as a child without it being too bad. And it was definitely a golden era of gaming. It was still affordable, there wasn't multiplayer. It was all about great single player games. Now some cool things that you may not know about the PS2 are some little Easter eggs on the front of the console. So this little PlayStation logo here is actually rotatable depending on the orientation you have the console in. So if you lay it on its side, you can obviously have it that way, or if you stood it up vertically, you could flip it that way, so it all matched pretty nicely. But overall, this satin silver PS2 is very nice. In fact, it's a very similar shade of gray to that Batman console that we just looked at. And I can't wait to see what these color schemes look like on the PS5 console covers that are soon to release. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a game in the box. No way. There's one of those demo discs. You are joking me, mate. Oh, Andy's hit us up. He may have missed the controller in the box, but we got one of those demo discs. No way. What we got on it? Demo only. What games? What games? Okay. Oh, that's sick. I don't know if it's going to work. Look how scratched that thing is. I don't know if that's going to work. It's now time for our final console of the day. And this one I'm extremely excited about. I think it's probably one of the nicest in the entire video. And it's the Battlefront 2 PS4 Slim. Now there's a few variations of Spider-Man limited edition consoles for the PS4. There was a Darth Vader one for Battlefront 1. There was then this Slim version and also a PS4 Pro version, which was basically this exact console, but in black. However, out of all of those, I think the Slim version in gray was by far the nicest. Now Battlefront 2 was another controversial game, a bit like Batman Arkham Oranges. This came out, had a ridiculous amount of microtransactions, really buggy on launch. It was a really bad era of gaming when these consoles came out. But over time, it has gradually became a, a good game and, and uh, it got much better towards the end of its uh, lifetime of that title. Okay, let's start with the controller. Looks all right, pretty simple. Just a nice black controller. Got your, obviously, your Star Wars logos for the Republic and all that type of stuff. And then you've got Star Wars on the D-pad. Now, it just doesn't say Star Wars once in case you're not sure what game it is. It says Star Wars about 20 times on such a tiny surface area. They've, they've really maximized that. Now, interestingly, there's no Star Wars logo on the back, but with the God of War limited edition controller that had a logo on the back. Let's take a look at what the Slim actually looks like. Now, the PS4 Slim, was a really small console. I, I loved uh, what they did with this. They packed all that power into a really tiny form factor. And that looks good. Oh, it's different. I thought it was going to be like a, a metal looking gray, a little bit like what we just saw with the, the Batman console and that metallic console of the PS2. But it's actually a dark gray, like a, like a matte gray, very similar to the gray on the God of War PS4 Pro that we took a look at in a different video. This is actually a miles different than what I thought. It looks completely different to the picture on the box. But that doesn't mean I'm not impressed by it. I think it's simple, looks very effective. And in fact, this style of grey makes a lot of sense because it's the imperial sort of grey, isn't it? It's the colour of an 8080. So it makes a lot of sense. That's what they've actually done. They've colour coded it very nicely. A pretty neat Easter egg that a lot of players probably have overlooked. Also, you could say it's the same grey as the Death Star. It, it's just that colour theme of grey. All the, all the baddies in Star Wars, are that they've got grey ships like this. Another special feature about this Battlefront PS4 Slim was the extra hard drive space it had back when it released. The PS4 Slim usually just came with 500 gigabytes. And this actually came with a one terabyte drive, so double the amount of space, which was pretty nice and made it pretty good value. 
If you want to see me unbox some of the coolest PlayStations ever made, you should check out this video next.